everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Hermione and you are watching one of the 12 DIYs of Christmas. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips for gift giving this year, especially if you're on a tight budget. So I want to share some shopping tips, some general tips, and some DIYs with you guys so that you can give some really meaningful gifts this Christmas without breaking the bank. Today's video is very kindly being sponsored by Shop Tagger. You guys know by now that I love Shop Tagger. I really think it's such a cool idea and it definitely helps you save a lot of money, especially if you're on a budget. So they are actually my first tip so I'm gonna go ahead and get into these tips right now and share with you a little bit more about saving money while gift giving this Christmas. So as I mentioned, the first tips are all about shopping smart and on a tight budget. You guys know I love Shop Tagger, I think it's great. Recently I have been using it to tag loads of Christmas presents that I'd really like to get for people, but I've just got my fingers crossed that maybe these things will go in the sale at some point soon. So what it is, is it's an app that you can use on your browser or your phone and you can download it on Google Chrome. And you just press the button when you're on your favorite website to tag any item that you want to keep an eye on. You can select different preferences, add it to any list that you want to create and then save it to your page. Once you've done that, you can go into your shop tagger profile and all of your saved items are there. It will notify you when there's any change in price or if your item has come back in stock if it previously was out of stock. You can also share your lists, which is a great way to subtly or not so subtly show people what you would like for Christmas. They've also got a $10,000 Nordstrom holiday giveaway going on right now, so do take a look at it. I'm going to leave the link for Shop Tagger in the description box below. It's free to download, so you guys should go check it out. Moving swiftly on to the DIY projects in this video, I've made a good few stocking stuffer ideas, including this keychain with Scrabble letters. It's so easy to make, so let me show you how I made it. You'll need some thick braided ribbon, you'll need some Scrabble letters, and you'll also need a key ring. Cut a piece of your ribbon twice as long as your word and then add an extra two inches just for good measure. Then place it with the good side facing up and slide your key ring on and then fold it over. Glue the ends together and then what you're going to be doing is turning this inside out. That's why you want the wrong side facing up at this point. Once that's really nice and secure, you can fold it inside out again and there you have the base of your keyring. Now all that's left is to attach your Scrabble letters, so just take a glue gun, pick out your letters and place them very carefully into the middle of the ribbon. It's so simple, you can make a ton of these in no time at all. With one packet of Scrabble letters from the craft store and one reel of ribbon, you could probably make about 10 or 12 of these and it would only cost you about five or six pounds. It's really inexpensive to make. As you can see, this is how mine turned out and mum, if you're watching this, you're getting this with your Christmas present this year. This next gift is for somebody who you just don't know what to get for them, but all you do know is that they really like beer. This is just a simple bottle opener. For this, you will need one of these bottle opener tabs. You can get them really inexpensively in the craft store. You'll need some kind of wood plaque. You can paint this or leave it as it is. And you need alphabet letters or stickers. So what you need to do is just assemble it by taking your bottle opener and just screwing it in using the screws provided in the kit. It really doesn't take long for this gift to take shape. Once you've screwed it in, the gift is practically ready. All you have to do after that is decorate it to the taste of whoever you're gonna give this to. So I just decided to stick some letters on that said beer time. I don't know, I couldn't think of anything better to put on there. You could paint this, you could add pictures or photos or anything that you would want and just make it really personalized for the person that you're giving it to. You might want to add some kind of fixture to the back of this so that it can be mounted on the wall. Mine just had a piece of twine so I went with that, but this is how it turned out. It was very easy and really inexpensive to make. 
How about making a jewellery box for somebody? This one is also very simple to make and you won't believe how inexpensive it is. I picked up this wooden crafting frame from the range for only one pound. You could also use a mini canvas turned upside down. For this you'll also need some scrap fabric, I'm using this stripy one and you want to make sure it's ever so slightly bigger than your crafting frame. So what you're going to do is roll it up into rolls really tightly and making sure they're all the same size, cut them down and then you're going to fit them into the box. So once you've done that, measure them with your thumb like I'm doing here and then just cut off the excess to make sure they're a really tight fit in the box. One thing I would recommend is to use a block colour for the fabric or a really busy print. The stripes just never lined up straight and it really frustrated me. Anyway, once you've done that and you've rolled up your fabric, go ahead and add some fabric glue or tacky glue to the inside and then roll it up tight. Then you're going to need to glue it to the inside of your frame, so just add a small amount of glue to the bottom of the frame and place your fabric roll inside. Repeat this step as many times as it takes to fill the box, just make sure that for every roll that you put in it's secured really nice and tightly next to the last one so that you've got a tight fit to hold the rings in place. At the end you should have something that looks a little bit like this and you can of course personalize this to the taste of whoever you're giving it to. There are so many different options. The next gift that's perfect for a stocking is this truth or dare tower game. Now I picked up the tower game from Tiger. it was really inexpensive, it was like £4, something like that, but I'm going to modify this to make it a fun gift. Cut up small pieces of paper and write some truths and dares onto the pieces of paper, you'll need really tiny handwriting for this, and then glue them on one side of each brick. You might want to leave a few of these blank, however many you make, go ahead and put them back in the box and then give them to someone this Christmas. It will definitely make for a very interesting Christmas day. There's always somebody that you just don't know what to buy for, so you end up giving them a photo in a frame. We've all done it. But here's an idea for making your frame look a little bit more interesting. Remove your frame from the backing and then take some tile grout. Yeah tile grout and spread this all over the front of the frame using some kind of lolly stick or something disposable that you don't mind getting a little bit messy. I picked this tile grout up from Poundland so it was very inexpensive. Once you've covered the whole front of the frame, take your stick and start adding some texture by making small movements in the tile grout. This gives the frame a really unique looking concrete kind of effect so it's not just a plain old frame anymore. Once you've left that to dry, you can go ahead and paint it. I'm just using a kind of beigey cream colour and make sure you get the sides as well. This is how mine turned out, but you can get really creative and try loads of different patterns and techniques with this. Another way to save money while shopping this Christmas is to actually make a stocking for somebody with smaller items. I love stockings because I love the surprise of finding loads of little things in there. And if you pick up your items from your local dollar store or pound store, you could save a lot of money and actually my local pound store has some really good things at the moment so here are a few things I picked up recently that I think would make really nice gifts. Poundland has loads of surprisingly good homeware including this pineapple and these cute little apples and pears and of course they're only a pound. You can also pick up things like photo frames and candles as well that would make great stocking stuffers. Take a look in the kitchenware section for people who really like to bake. I picked up this really nice ceramic mixing bowl and the matching ramekins recently. I was so surprised how good value these were and this lovely pink glass was also in there too so it just goes to show you can find some really interesting things. Also take a look at this box light in the shape of a cloud. I love this. This is in the homeware section. This is such a cute stocking stuffer. Also they might have some really nice Christmassy bits. I picked up this mug recently and the makeup bits. Some of them can be pretty good if if you have a little look around so don't forget there and finally for people who love techie things there's loads of phone cases and phone stands you just have to have a really good route around to find something that's worth buying but it's totally worth it 
And lastly, if you're in a bit of a pinch this year, the best way to someone's heart is food. How about trying these really easy DIY chocolates? They're only going to cost you a couple of candy canes and some chocolate, just plain old chocolate from the supermarket. Let's get into it. You will need a silicone ice tray for this. This was from Flying Tiger. It was about two pounds and you'll also need some chocolate. I'm using white chocolate because it's snowflakes. Also because I prefer white chocolate and I'm not gonna lie, I've eaten all of these already. They were for me. And I'm also using some candy canes here. What you need to do with these is pop them in a plastic bag and then crush them up with a rolling pin to make much smaller candy cane pieces. Once you've done that, melt your chocolate and place it into the silicone mold. Make sure that it covers every single edge and corner just so that you have the perfect shape. This will give you those kind of boutique looking chocolates without having to spend much money. Once you've filled them up, add those candy canes pieces to the top of your chocolates this is going to become the bottom of your chocolates if that makes sense and then once you've done that pop them in the fridge for about half an hour until they've dried this is how mine turned out I'm not gonna lie I'm actually really impressed and they tasted really good too so that's everything for today's video. I really hope it was helpful and it helps you save a little bit of money while gift giving this Christmas without taking away from the special meaning of the gifts. Anyway, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of the 12 DIYs of Christmas. And do like this video if you did like it, that would be great. It lets me know that you like DIYs. Anyway, have a great day and I hope you're having a good December and I will see you in my next video. Bye.